So today I want to talk about algae eaters. If you are like me, you like the more common species, you know, the bristlenose plecos, near eye snails, a mono shrimp, flagfish, those are all awesome fish. But also, if you're like me, you like a little bit more oddball type fish. Now, the term oddball is pretty subjective, so take that, you know, with a grain of salt. What's common to you might be, you know, something that another person has never heard of. So just keep that in mind. And that's what I want to go over today. A few species that probably aren't the first to come to mind when you think about algae eaters. Now, it's important to note that while all these fish will graze on algae, definitely make sure that you're feeding them as well. Drop in some cucumbers, algae wafers, whatever, whatever it is. Just don't rely on algae alone because a lot of these will just graze through your algae super fast and then starve out. So definitely make sure you're feeding your fish. But let's get right into the first one. The twig catfish or the Farlowella catfish. This twig of a fish comes from Colombia and Venezuela and is found in streams, rivers, hanging out in vegetation, dead leaves, fallen branches, the plants, uh, plants obviously, and the roots of trees. Uh, they generally get around six inches and like it a little bit warmer, 75 to 80, so not for your, your cold or unheated aquarium, definitely, and a pH of around six to seven. The twig catfish is incredibly peaceful, so it's perfect for community aquariums, uh, 20 gallons or larger, I'd say. Uh, the rival males can spar for territories, so if you're keeping them in groups, definitely keep that in mind. Another bonus of the twig catfish is that they're relatively easy to breed. If conditions are right, they will usually spawn on a vertical surface like the side of your aquarium. Now breeding is the easy part. Raising the fry can be a bit more tricky. They have small yolk sacs, so they starve out pretty quick and they need to graze right away. So if you find eggs and they hatch, make sure to put some vegetables in there so they can constantly spawn. Rapashi is a good alternative to uh, vegetables. Now, if you're looking for something a bit more noble, <laughs> I recommend the Royal Farloella. These whiptail catfish also hail from Colombia, but have a much wider range in Central and South America. The Royal Farloella gets a little longer than its twig counterpart at about eight inches and also much bigger bodied. They will also develop a striking, that's right, a striking liar tail if there are no fin nippers in the aquarium. So if you got some Pristilla tetras or just something that likes to fin nip, you're probably not going to get that liar tail. Now they do like a little bit warmer water than their twig counterparts. They can go up to 85 degrees, but generally 77 on the low end. And uh, like the twig catfish, a pH of about six and a half to 7.5 is just fine. Also a peaceful fish, perfect for community aquariums. However, I would not go anything smaller than a 40 gallon, uh, especially if you're keeping more Then you probably want to get up to like 55, 75 if, if you're keeping more than one. Now the Royal Farlowella definitely grazes on algae, but be sure to supplement with some meteor type algae wafers, uh, frozen foods, just a few times a week, just to give it a varied diet. So next on the list is the rubber lip pleco. Now this is definitely not what I consider an oddball or even an uncommon fish, but it's definitely a fish that gets left off a lot of algae eater lists. And that's why it's on my list today. The rubber lip pleco is incredibly hardy and also insanely efficient at eating algae. Like the previous two fish, the rubber lip pleco does come from Colombia. That means water around 78 degrees with the same pH of around 6.5 to 7.5. Now not only is the rubber lip pleco an algae eater, but it also stays pretty small at about 4 inches, making it perfect for community aquariums of around 20 gallons, and you could also get away with having a couple of these guys in a 20 gallon aquarium. Now in the wild they do come from fast flowing streams however it's not really necessary to duplicate that in your aquarium but that does mean that the water is highly oxygenated so the use of an air stone or sponge filter is pretty recommended pretty highly recommended as a matter of fact and they will do well in planted aquariums and are peaceful towards other fish but like most plecos two males can't fight over territory so just keep that in mind now algae does make up a large portion of its diet, however it would also benefit from a few meaty foods once or twice a week. Next up we have the Zebra Autosynclus. Now you're all probably familiar with the common Autosynclus, but there are a few varieties of this fish and the Zebra is one of them. First and foremost, I want to say this is definitely not a beginner fish. They tend to be a bit more finicky than your average Auto, so just keep that in mind when you're picking your next algae eater. In the wild, they are found in large rivers where the water is slow flowing and there is lots and lots of plant life. So planted tanks, a definite plus for these fish. 
So one tip with this fish like most community fish is the more the merrier. They are found in really large shoals in the wild and usually hang out towards the upper part of the water column. They max out at around 2 inches just like the, the common auto. Uh, like a bit cooler water though about 70 to 77 degrees and a pH of 6 to 7 and a half. And the trick with this fish is definitely lots and lots of algae. As you can tell by the water in this aquarium there is an algae bloom because I'm trying to grow just a ton of algae for them and I even have a rapashi soil and green in there. Vegetables such as cucumbers and zucchini should be offered as well and that's really going to be the key to keeping this fish alive. Now this is a very peaceful fish and you need to take its size into consideration with picking tank mates, small tetras, resbor, pygmy corridoras all great tank mates for the zebra auto well we finally are leaving south america and heading over to myanmar for one of my all-time favorite fish not just favorite algae eaters but favorite fish and that's the pandagara first things first with the pandagara it is an omnivore so while it will eat algae in your aquarium it's going to require regular feedings of meaty foods whether that be flakes uh, pellets wafers frozen live whichever just not going to do well if you only give it algae pandagaras are usually found in shallow small streams in the wild with lots of vegetation and rocky substrate so lots of rocks they love cruising around from rock to rock but again that just means they're perfect for planted community aquariums they're not a schooling fish, but they are found in loose aggregations. I've had no issues keeping multiple species in an aquarium. Uh, they do get around three and a half inches. So, you know, one for a 20 gallon, two to three for a 40 gallon, five to six for a four foot tank, etc. Kind of judge on your own there, but they do like to be in, in loose groups. Another reason I love Panagaras is they're highly adaptable and will thrive in just about any water you throw at them. Generally, you know, 70 to 80 degrees, a pH of six to eight, they'll do just fine. Also one of my favorite fish because they stay smaller at around three and a half inches, relatively peaceful, and they're just super active. Unlike pleco fish, you will constantly always see panagaras grazing, swimming, and just up to general mischief. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of their common names is a clown gara because they're, they are clowns. They're super fun to watch, active, and again, just one of my favorite, favorite fish. All right, so there is my list of uncommon. I'm gonna say uncommon and oddball, but they're really not the most oddball, not the most uncommon. But like I said earlier, I wanted to highlight some species that don't get mentioned a lot when people ask for algae eating fish, you know, like bushy nose, a mono shrimp, those get thrown out all the time. But I just wanted to give some suggestions outside of the common species. So there you have it. Let me know down below if you have any uncommon or oddball type algae eaters, and I'll see you all in the next video.